Ladies and gentlemen, Psalms 41 and 40, verses 13 and onward says, Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let them be ashamed and confounded together that seek after my soul to destroy it. Let them be driven backward and put to shame that wish me evil. Let them be desolate for a reward of their shame that say unto me, Aha! Aha! Let all those that seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee. Let such as love thy salvation say continually the Lord be magnified. But I am poor and needy. Yet the Lord thinks about me. You are my help and my deliverer. Make no tarrying, O my God. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and amen. This is David talking about his enemies. And they're out of destruction. But truth be told, the haters say one thing, but the truth truly is revealed within time. Before I go into what I want to speak about today, I want you to remember the victims of the mass shooting, the earthquakes in Mexico, the hurricanes in the Caribbean and south of North America. Let's keep them in our thoughts or prayers and where we can help. Let us help them. I also wanted to speak about some matchups, which I didn't get to speak about. Deontay Wilder facing Bervain Stavern in a rematch is intriguing. And to know that Dillian White may be facing Dominic Brazil is interesting, but I already think that Dillian White will knock him out. As to the other matchups that I want to speak about, Jermel Charlo versus Erickson Lubin, I pick Charlo to win because of his experience, as well as Danny Jacobs versus Louis Arias, in which I give Jacobs the edge. I wanted to get that out of the way because those are some of the current events that are happening today, before I get into what we're talking about. Now, if you look at Gennady Golovkin here, as he's facing off against Canelo Alvarez, you can see that Gennady Golovkin is significantly taller than Canelo. In fact, he even looks physically bigger than Canelo overall. All right. Here are a couple more images of Gennady Golovkin versus Canelo, where you see clearly that he's taller than Canelo as a height advantage. Here, he looks bigger and taller than Canelo. This is the eye test. When you see them in the weigh-ins, again, Gennady Golovkin is significantly taller than Canelo. He looks even longer than Canelo. Canelo looks short and stucky compared to Gennady Golovkin, who's long and a little bit more langlier. Not necessarily smaller than Canelo, even though Canelo looks a little bit broader than him, but definitely longer and langlier. When we see them from a side view, we can see that Gennady Golovkin is sizably bigger. Look how much more broader he is than Canelo. And that's because he's a career middleweight, so they're significantly bigger guys. Can Canelo's not really a middleweight. He's grown into middleweight. He's growing into middleweight, but he's not a... Just like how Andre Ward wasn't really a career lightweight, he was growing into lightweight when he faced uh, Sergey Kovalev the first time. So the same thing has happened with Canelo against Gennady Golovkin. So it's not surprising when we look at the physical attributes of them that Gennady Golovkin is taller than Canelo, He's got a longer reach than Canelo. And in addition to that, he has a higher knockout percentage than Canelo. So all the things that you really need to beat a fighter in a fight, especially if you're known for your jab and cutting off the ring and your power, is what Gennady Golovkin had going into this fight against Canelo. The only thing that Canelo had going for him was that he was younger than Gennady Golovkin. So the question we have to ask is, how in God's green earth did Canelo nullify all those advantages to be able to land the harder, more eye-catching body shots on Golovkin, as well as even apply his own jab, and not even get touched in a significant way? If you remember anything in the fight where Gennady Golovkin significantly touched Canelo, please let me know, in a significant way, by Gennady Golovkin. How is that possible? Well, we could ask that same question 
for Canelo versus Julio Cesar Chavez, which was the fight before he faced Gennady Golovkin, which was the fight was testing out how he would perform at middleweight. Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. was an interesting subject because he's known to be tough, strong, a body puncher like Gennady Golovkin, and he's significantly taller and longer than Canelo. You can see here, just by both of them in the presence, how significantly taller Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. is to Canelo. And he's significantly bigger than him. His head is much bigger than Canelo's head. His hands are significantly bigger than Canelo's hands. His body is significantly bigger than Canelo's body. Canelo looks like a dwarf compared to Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. So it's not surprising when we see them stand next to each other how much bigger Chavez Jr. is to Canelo Alvarez. In the way in, you can see that Chavez Jr. again is significantly bigger, taller than Canelo. You see them side by side, so you're not really able to see the width of Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. there. But there they are standing next to each other and Canelo's looking up at Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. who's significantly taller. Let's look at their dimensions, the tail of the tape. Canelo's got the age advantage, but that's it. Julio Cesar Chavez is four inches taller. He is also got two inches in reach over Canelo. Got less fights and he has a lower knockout percentage. But who says the Chavez Jr. started off at middleweight and is campaigning at present at super middleweight. Not only that, but he went as high up as light heavyweight. So this is a much physically bigger stronger, taller guy than Canelo. And in the fight, he applied his jab. What happened? Well, this happened. Every time Julio Cesar Chavez threw his jab, he got countered. I'm not talking about joke countered. I'm talking about he got countered hard. Hard. Made him hesitant to come forward. And walk Canelo down. He started walking Canelo down early in the fight. And he changed his tune. And he was the one boxing on the outside. Canelo was the one walking him down. Think about what I'm saying. How does a stumpier guy, a shorter guy, a physically smaller guy... Look at, look at who he says to shove his back compared to Canelo's back. This is a much bigger guy than Canelo. How does that dude end up looking like this at the end of a fight. He's cowering. Oh, Canelo is landing hooks on him. Look at his face at the end of the fight. I'm not saying a Julio Cesar Chavez face doesn't look a mess after every single fight, but I mean, come on now. Look at his face. Look at his right, his left eye, and his whole left side of his face. And this motif we'll see again. Trust me. But first of all, look at his face. This is post fight. So what did Canelo do to Chavez Jr.? Well, Canelo's a guy who naturally is very capable of slipping punches. Here, when we look at this fight here, Canelo shows his ability to slip punches. So here he is. Gennady Golovkin throws a lead right and then a left, and they are both slipped. Which Canelo will slip out the way of that punch and the next one. Not only does he slip his head out the way, but his body as well. Watch this. Uppercut, lead right, slipped, left. He's out the way of the punches. Okay, and he uses his footwork as well. Canelo is deceptively quick with his feet. That's what people don't know. Now the other thing you see him do is head control Gennady Golovkin. Get him where he wants him to be. And then he uses his forearm, like his jab, which is called a collapsible jab, to control Gennady Golovkin. In fact, he does it here too with the lead right. He kind of actually controls it with his forearm. Watch the forearm get into the way of the lead right. So sort of block it. So here he here controls Golovkin after he hits him with the spleen shot. And then he gets him to position to land another liver shot. Body punch. Then he actually uses his lead hand, his uh, left hand, his forearm, to push Gennady Golovkin back. And also blind him at the same time. So all of those things Canelo did. I'll show you it again. Head control. Lead hand, 
There it is. Blocks. Blocks. Wants to get Golovkin where he wants him to go. And then he lands the uppercut. Blocks with the lead hand while he's also slipping the punch. All right. So it's all that stuff Canelo does in one go. So he is able to nullify your jab. He's able to nullify your reach. He's able to nullify your power. He's able to nullify your height advantages because he's defensively sound and he's defensively responsible with everything he does. It's a lot of complex things Canelo is doing in there. That's why he's the ring general. It's not the guy who's pushing you back that's the ring general. Hell no. He's the ring general in there. So what we ended up in the fight seeing is Canelo landing right crosses to Gennady Golovkin's head, left hooks to Gennady Golovkin's head, uh, right hooks to Golovkin's body, right hooks to Golovkin's head. Repeatedly you see that right hook is constantly being landed. Some right uppercuts as well. Some right crosses to Golovkin's head. Some left hooks to Golovkin's chin. And so on. Another left hook to Golovkin's chin. Just check left hook as Canelo is rolling out the way. And right cross to Golovkin's head. And so forth and so forth. Here we are seeing Golov Canelo just landing a barrage, a right uppercut to Golovkin's face. Some jabs, some combinations to the body, a right hook or uppercut to the right side of his head. He's really landing a lot of shots to the right side of his head. I never noticed that. A lot of shots. So that explains why Gennady Golovkin looks like this. Look at the right side of his face, how it's puffy and swollen. Kind of like Chavez's face, except Chavez's face swells up more than Golovkin's face. We got a puffy, swollen right side of his face. And guess what's happening with Canelo's face? Nothing. Not one thing. So, at the end of the day, I just wanted to share this video because I thought it was enlightening for people to understand that Canelo brings a lot to the table, skill-wise, that nullifies and neutralizes the jabs of opponents, especially if guys like to depend on their jab, and also the offense of the opponent, especially the opponent is a guy who loves to throw punches to the body, whether it's straight jabs to the body or hooks. Canelo's movement offsets that and Canelo is very aware of range and distance so you can't get off your power shots like you would like to on top of that I think Canelo has a very good foot movement and footwork uh, unlike what other people will tell you he's actually got ex exceptional footwork the thing is Canelo like Floyd they fight continuously but they don't throw a whole bunch of punches so it, People say you could outwork them, but I don't think Gennady Golovkin outworked uh, Canelo. I think that what happened was Canelo actually landed the much more effective punching throughout the fight. Gennady Golovkin had landed a couple probing jabs, but not a lot of his probing jabs actually landed. A lot of his power jabs did not land. A lot of his power shots didn't land. So the real guy in almost every single round, you could actually give every single round to Canelo just based on effective punching. You know, the closest I think Gennady Golovkin gets to an effective round would be round nine. So, I'm just saying that, of course, Canelo's going to make it much more definitive. And he's going to be a little bit more, I think, in the next fight, he's going to be a little bit more purposeful in what he does. You know, what punches he throws and why he throws them. and, and Not just because they're available openings, but he's going to do specific things, I think, in the rematch, which will ensure his victory. He may not get the knockout you know you don't go into a fight looking for a knockout or looking to get, stop the fight you just gotta take your time be patient stay composed and do what you do and all he needs to do is do what he does a little just a little bit more clearer like if he's off on the ropes he needs to be clear and counter punching Golovkin making him pay for anything especially when he throws his jab because that needs to make him pay for throwing the jab that's what I think he needs to do Pr principally that because Golovkin does everything off his jab. So, that's my tip to Canelo. Work the body, be very intentional about what you're doing, and punish Golovkin every time he throws a jab, or thinks about throwing a jab, he must be punished for it. So he thinks about throwing the jab. And that's all I gotta say. Golovkin's a very tough, mentally tough guy, uh, and so it's not gonna be easy to get him out of there. 
even if he's just walking around like a zombie, he's not throwing anything, it's still going to be hard to get him out of there. But it can be done. And all Canelo has to do is pace himself properly, stay composed, stay relaxed, take his time, pick his shots, but be more emphatic about what you do. In other words, people must not have, they must not have a doubt in their minds that you're controlling the fight. That this is your fight. You chose to do this. You chose to do that. No matter if Golovkin comes relentlessly at Canelo with pressure, Canelo has the defense to handle Golovkin's pressure. And then it's Canelo's turn to mount his offense, which he generally lands with, but he needs to be more intentional about what he's actually going to do when he mounts his offense so that he can actually wear down Golovkin and make him think more than he should about whatever he wants to throw. That's the key to the fight. Anyway, that's all I got to say for now. I don't want to be very specific about any specific thing. You guys have a great one.